Hi, my name is Richard Azerga from Microsoft. You know, Microsoft Excel is the most popular tool in the world for business intelligence and reporting. For that reason, numerous organizations and software vendors have leveraged different ways of getting their data into Excel so that users can slice and dice that data and put different visualizations on top of it. Microsoft has supported this model for years by developing new ways of connecting to numerous different types of data. So in, in the most recent offerings through Power BI, we have tools like Power Query and Power Pivot that allow us to connect to numerous different types of data. So I'll go out here to Excel and I'll just go to the Power Query tab and under external data, I can do things like go out to the web, I can go out to different data files or maybe even a folder full of data files. I can go to a number of different type of databases. I can even go to some very kind of unorthodox data sources like maybe go to a SharePoint list or the Azure Marketplace or even something like Facebook. So in a lot of cases, Microsoft has you covered with the type of data connection that you need. However, there are three scenarios where this model might break down for you. First of all, Microsoft can't simply support every conceivable type of data source that a user might want to connect to. So your data source may not be in these lists you may not see an option for you. Second of all, your option might be in these lists, but it's not as black and white. So a good example of that is, you could see I have an option here of going to an OData feed. So REST and OData are a really popular way right now, kind of an industry standard of going and getting to data and connecting to it and pulling that in. Now, unfortunately, not all REST and OData is created equal. You might have a scenario that has maybe unique authentication constraints or maybe, maybe it's throttled in some sort of way to prevent denial of service. And in some of those scenarios, the standard you know, Power Query way of going to OData may not work. Finally, the third scenario where it starts to break down is if you have a data source that's just way overly complex for a user to understand. Right? I wouldn't expect the normal user to know how to go out and connect to maybe SQL Server and beyond that, understand how all the different tables in SQL Server relate to each other so that they can get value out of it. Right? And that's the whole reason why things like BI semantic models are created to kind of add a layer of abstraction over that complex data model. And so for those three reasons, right, having maybe some sort of proprietary data source maybe a data source that doesn't necessarily fit perfectly into a standard connection, or if you just have a really complex data model, those three scenarios are big reasons why we see organizations and software vendors introducing plugins into Excel. Excel plugins are wildly popular. If there's a software vendor out there that works with data, chances are they have some sort of Excel plugin to get their data into Excel. And now these, these plugins have traditionally been developed using very niche technology, things like VSTO or using VBA and macros that aren't necessarily the most developer friendly way of doing things. You know, beyond that, they have a, a pretty heavy uh, footprint on the client that uses them. So you actually have to install assemblies and DLLs on the client machine in order to use those plugins. So what I want to do in this video and blog is highlight how we can use the new app model, specifically use an Excel-based app for Office to be able to connect to some of these non-traditional data sources, get data from them, and be able to get that data into Excel so that we can work with it like normal. And this is a really popular model for delivering reporting in a proprietary landscape. And so let's take a look. So first of all, my primary way to have a, a, an app, which is kind of what we're going to work with, interact with our workbook is through something called the Web Extensibility Framework. And ultimately what this, this Extensibility Framework is, is a set of JavaScript libraries that are going to allow us to interact between a web page and our Excel workbook. Now one of the primary structures that we're going to interact with is the Excel table. And so what I have highlighted here is where I'm working with a data structure called an office.table data. And this is actually the data source that I would use to interact with one of those Excel tables. Now what we're going to be able to do is I can read data from it, I can write data to it. Ultimately, all of that's going to occur client side. 
Now, what that means is, is we're actually going to have to interact with the workbook client side. That doesn't necessarily mean I have to do data access client side, but there might be some scenarios where I do want to do things client side. So um, I mentioned that sometimes uh, something like a REST or OData feed doesn't fit just kind of this, the same model of, of all other REST and OData feeds. A good example of that is Yammer. I connect to Yammer a lot and do a lot of cool social analytic things with Yammer. Unfortunately, Yammer uses an OAuth process to authenticate and every single API request has to have a token in the request header. Beyond that, Yammer is going to throttle their APIs so that I can't just bombard Yammer and maybe pull millions and millions of records in a very short amount of time. They're gonna make sure I do it at a certain throttle so that I don't bombard their systems. And so for these scenarios, I might need to add some additional logic client side. So I could do things like build my own little maybe queue so that I don't um, request things beyond what the throttle will allow me to. And I can maybe add all of my header information on my requests. So there's a, certainly a client side scenario that I can, I can do here. And what ultimately what I'm going to do is once I get that data back, I can go and create this table data structure. I can add some header information to it, which defines the different columns of, of data. And then I can add my rows of data before putting that into the Excel workbook. So let's actually take a look at this working. So first of all, we'll look at this client side scenario. I'm gonna go out to a REST OData service that maybe has some unique constraints and then populate our Excel workbook. So here it is. We're gonna get some historic stock information here. And this is gonna do it all client side. So we'll go ahead and put in a stock ticker here from MSFT. We'll look at Microsoft and we'll go back maybe to the beginning of 2013. So I'll go ahead and say get history and I put a breakpoint here. You could see we're doing a standard, um, basically jQuery call out to a REST service. So we're going out and getting history. We're doing a get. Now I might be doing more things around this if I needed to go out for every year and get you know things a year at a time. But ultimately, I'm getting some JSON data back. And um, one of the things that we've uh, developed as part of this solution is a set of extension methods on this table data object. So what I'm gonna be able to do is, I have an extension method for add headers and add range. Add headers is going to look at the rest, the, I'm sorry, the JSON data that comes back, and it's going to define what columns are coming back in that data. So if I were just to look at this data in a little bit more detail, I can see that I get things like an adjusted close, a close, a date, a high, a low, an open, a volume. Those are all the statistics for a specific day of this stock history. And so what we're going to do is use that to define our headers. And once we've defined the headers, then we're going to send all the JSON data into an extension that's going to populate this um, table data object with all of the rows of data. So we'll do that. And then finally, we're going to go and bind that table data to our Excel workbook. So we'll go ahead and let this finish. And what's gonna happen is you can see that it went and inserted all of that data into our Excel workbook. And again, this was a 100% client side scenario. Now that's great for some of those complex REST OData scenarios where I might have some weird constraint in connecting to those. But what about some of those other scenarios? Maybe I have some really odd proprietary data source that I need to go to. It's not exposed as REST and OData. How am I gonna handle that? So we're gonna use a very similar model to do this server side. It's really gonna be a three-step process. So server side, I'm first gonna go get my data. I'm then going to convert that data into a JSON format that I'm going to just stick on the page somewhere. Then third, once my page loads, my page script is gonna go and look for JSON data. If it exists, it can go through that same process of uh, defining table data structure, setting the headers, putting the rows in, and binding it. So let's take a look at this server side. It's gonna be pretty much identical to what the other form looked like. We'll go ahead and say MSFT. This time maybe we'll go back to 2012. I'm gonna add a new sheet here just so we can um, see it a little bit differently. And now I'm going to say get history. But now you can see it's actually putting, it's stopping server side. So I'm actually in a button click event server side. This is C sharp. And I'm going to go out and get my data. That's step one. 
So we'll just go ahead and, and get data. Now remember, at this point, I can get data any way that .NET supports. So that really allows me to do almost anything imaginable. Then I'm going to get that data and serialize it as JSON. So that's what I'm doing here using the data contract JSON serializer to basically convert this um, list of stock statistics into a JSON string. So here I have a JSON string. Uh, that might be a little bit hard to see on the video, but ultimately it's a JSON string. And then finally what I'm gonna do is just place that somewhere on my page. So you can see here I'm doing page um, dot client script uh, dot register startup script. So I'm basically just outputting this on my page um, just as a variable in JavaScript format. So I'll go ahead and press play here. And then finally, as soon as my page loads, now it's going to hit some JavaScript that I have. So if I look at this JavaScript, this is on document ready, which is basically saying, hey, when the app loads in the client, so what we were looking at before was some server side code. This is saying when the app loads in my client, I'm going to go look to see if this JSON data exists. If it does, I'm going to go through the exact same process. I'm going to define my table data. I'm going to go and add headers or define my headers based upon the JSON data that comes back. Um, I'm then going to go add my rows to the table data. And finally, I'm going to pass that table data off to uh, be bound into the Excel workbook. So I'll go ahead and press play here. And again, what we'll see is I have now my, my table data here. And if I were to scroll down, you can see in this case, it's a lot more than the last one because we did two and a half years instead of one and a half years. So there's a, a couple of things that are really unique here. First of all, at this point, I could be completely done with my little app. My app was really just there as a mechanism of getting to data and getting it into Excel. So at this point, I could close this task pane app. It's not really a part of the document. It's used to really help me get the data and put my document together. I'm gonna leave it up here just for a moment and show you how I might be able to work with this data now. So I'm just gonna maybe select this data. This is historic stock data. You can see that Excel gives me maybe some recommended charts that I can go and view this data in. But what I'm gonna do is maybe use some of the other cool Power BI features. So I'm gonna insert maybe a Power View. So it's gonna look at this data and it's gonna build a, a temporary little data model that I can use to report against. So here's my data model and what I'm gonna do is maybe filter out some of this data and maybe I'm gonna start with date and maybe look at close date, high price and low price for every day. And I'm gonna maybe look at this as a line chart. And so what it's gonna do, it's gonna take that data and it's going to output that in the way that I want. In this case, it does it as a, kind of a really cool looking um, line chart that shows those three statistics, my close, high, and low uh, across. And you can see a really cool view of how Microsoft's stock price has trended over the past two and a half years. That's really cool, but unfortunately, um, users may not even know how to go that far. They may not know how to actually turn a table of data into a visual. And so what's cool is we could even go further than what we have so far. What I could do is I could actually save this file right now as a template. And if I save it as a template, not only is it going to save the visuals that I've put together, it'll actually save the app as part of the template. So what we'll end up with, if I went and sent this template off to someone, they'd be able to open up the template, they'd see my app, they could go put their own stock symbol and start date, get the data, and it would automatically refresh the visuals. So not only is this app model a great way of connecting to maybe some pri proprietary data sources, but it's a great way of maybe packaging it all together with some visualizations and maybe even a, a, a data model in PowerPivot to be able to package as one solution and one way of distributing all that to my end users. So hopefully this video helped illustrate how we can go to some of these data sources, whether it be client side or server side, be able to convert that into um, a table in Excel that we can then use any of the great Excel tools to work with. And again, at this point, we, we don't even need the app. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a part of this file. It was really just a mechanism of getting to our data. So check out the blog post, look how it was done, pull the code off of GitHub, and start making apps for Office a part of your data access and reporting strategy.